I'm very pleased to be part of this forum this morning in which I will try in a very short time to outline the agricultural food potential of Guyana, linkage to markets, positioning in the world dynamics, the global dynamics, but importantly, how do we ensure that we develop and build a sector that is resilient, very important in the world of climate change, that the sector is resilient, it's competitive, and importantly, it is robust enough to respond to changing dynamics in the market. At the end of the day, every sector you invest in is driven by market, is driven by competition, and is driven by efficiency of systems. I welcome you to a country that is open to do business, that is ready to facilitate growth and development, and that is ready to help private investment to ensure that you have a decent return. A country and a market that believes inherently in the participation of the private sector. So you are more or less familiar with Guyana if you're a recent attraction to Guyana, as Ambassador would say, you'll be more familiar with the oil and gas sector. If you are a long-term researcher on Guyana, you would then be very familiar with a few things. One, the potential for Guyana to produce a lot of the food requirement for CARICOM, its proximity to one of the most dynamic and robust agricultural sector by diversification in the world, that is Brazil. And of course, as Ambassador Lin said, the underinvestment, I would not say underdevelopment, but the underinvestment of the agricultural sector to realize its full potential. Why I would not say under development is because you have a government that is ready to put in the necessary infrastructure investment to facilitate the investment, the private investment in the sector to realize the potential we'll talk about this morning. As we speak, agriculture contributes 27.1% of our non-oil GDP. In terms of agricultural trade, our earning is just about 370 million US dollars. Primarily, these export earnings come from rice, fish, sugar, and some amount of non-agricultural produce, non-traditional produce, sorry. The employment in this sector is about 12.1%. As Ambassador said, most, mostly rural Guyana. But I want to say something. Although the employment is mostly rural Guyana, a lot of investment has been made in research technology development, and skills development. So in terms of farming skill set, I would say we have a very competent skill base in terms of our human asset available and ready to build a sector. As you know, we have very tropical climate, large expanse of fresh water, and importantly, vast tracts of productive land. So those who have experience in agriculture would know, when you hear vast tracts of productive 
land and fresh water coming together, you get excited. Because the natural environment with a tropical climate, the natural environment allows, the natural environment allows for the development of this sector. Our national budget, about 5%, and this is growing, about 5% of our national budget is allocated to agriculture. Guyana, in terms of food production, produces 59% of our own internal demand. So, this is some of what Guyana offers. 215,000 square kilometers of coastline, an ideal location to access global markets, attractive fiscal incentives for investment, a private sector friendly government, and of course a country with diverse people. There is a lot of scope also for import substitution. A lot of scope for import substitution in various areas. Beverages, animal feeds, spices, fruit and vegetables, meat. What are the areas that present an opportunity in the agriculture sector? Rice sugar, corn, soya, coconut, spices, fruits and vegetables, agro-processing, agrochemical business, in the livestock sector, poultry, beef, dairy, sheep, goat, and the fisheries, aquaculture, and shrimp. I would like to outline some of our present productive capacity and that of the region and what is available in the region itself. The region and that is CARICOM food market, our potential is about 25 million, 25 million US dollars in poultry. And 90% of this is imported. Guyana has the potential of satisfying all of CARICOM food requirement for poultry products, eggs, beef, aquaculture. We have the land, we have the fresh water, but what we don't have is the investment. What we don't have are the large scale mega farms that would allow us to produce, that would allow us to facilitate the type of, type of growth that would help us to enter this natural market in CARICOM. Imports into CARICOM for poultry products, for example, in 2018, is valued at 83.5 million US dollars. 83.5 million US dollars. Imports into CARICOM for table eggs is valued at US 55.5 million US dollars. And these are the 2018, these are the 2018 uh, numbers. So that allows you in one set to understand in one sector alone the type of potential that exists, the poultry sector. We have seen from our local producers a genuine push for the expansion of the poultry sector. Only this year the government commenced a program 
of supporting the poultry sector, of helping the poultry sector with backward and forward linkages. In the poultry sector itself, there is no value added beyond the production of meat. There is no backward linkage in terms of the input, the input for feed production. All the corn and soya is imported for feed production. So both backward linkages and forward linkages present an exciting opportunity for us in the poultry sector. If you look at beef, CARICOM import for beef products amounted to 40.8 million US dollars. In Guyana, whilst we produce enough for our local consumption, the land is there, but the mega type of production to meet the CARICOM requirement is absent. The type of breed of animals that is required is absent. The type of cuts that is required to meet the CARICOM market, which is a heavy tourism market, is not there. So, again, this is a natural market that is available in CARICOM, a 40.8 million US dollars market for beef. And these are 2080 numbers. And why am I emphasizing CARICOM market, the regional market? I'm emphasizing the regional market because we have preferential access to that market. Once we can demonstrate to the region that we have the capacity and the capability to meet the regional requirement in these areas, then we have a preferential access to those markets. If we look at opportunities in dairy, right here in Guyana, milk and milk product imports account for 95% of our total livestock imports. So investment in value added dairy the local opportunity alone for value-added dairy is estimated at close to 40 million US dollars. That is the local opportunity alone. When we look at the regional opportunity, it even gets better. As hundreds of millions of dollars are imported in dairy value added products regionally. If you look at small ruminants, you would see whilst there is 6.3% growth in demand globally, our CARICOM imports in 2018 was 19 million US dollars. That is what CARICOM imported in 2018. We have the ability of satisfying this entire market, which are primarily Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobago. What we need, as I said, are the investors who are ready to make the investment into large scale mega facilities that will support the growth and development of these different subsectors. In terms of land availability, in every one of these areas, we have lands that are available, we have fresh proximity to fresh water, and we have the critical infrastructure link that would allow you to move your produce from the field to the market or to the export facility as it is now. 
one of the areas that we will be focusing heavily in the short term is that of fisheries or aquaculture. There are tremendous opportunities in CARICOM and beyond CARICOM in the fishery sector. So we are looking at a com that commercial scale aquaculture, the setting up of a shrimp hatchery facility, fish and shrimp processing facility, and feed production facility. The potential markets include the USA, Mexico, and the EU. The USA, for example, imported over 550,000 metric tons of frozen shrimp and prawns valued at US $4.8 billion. So here is an opportunity for us to work together with the local private sector, with US investors, to meet the demand in the United States. And what do we have? For the aquaculture industry, we have the brackish water, we have fresh water, and we have salted water salted water, all of which are distinct and comparative advantages in the aquaculture industry. Guyana's comparative advantage is 2.15 times higher than any South American country's comparative advantage for this sector. I want to repeat that. Our comparative advantage is 2.15 times higher than any South American country's comparative advantage. And we know that Brazil is a key player in global supply. And even when compared to Brazil, our comparative advantage, the natural advantage we bring to this sector is 2.15 times that of any South American country. Again, like the other sectors, government provide a comprehensive list of tax, tax breaks, fiscal incentives, drainage and irrigation support, infrastructure support. These are things that government assists with. Then we have the traditional sector, rice. Rice also presents tremendous opportunity. We are looking at an expansion of this sector to have 100% increase in paddy production, moving close to 2 million tons. We're looking to increase the productive land areas by an additional 72,000 hectares of land. And we're looking to increase the productivity by de developing new varieties to increase yield from eight to nine tons per hectare. Of course, <coughs> this would require investment this would require investment in technology in new varieties and we are ready and willing to make that investment with rice of course <coughs> we have the ability to look at many other opportunities the processing of rice into value added pastas, noodles, cereal, snack foods, and even wine. One brewery in Guyana today is using rice to produce wines for the region. And currently, the market has grown to such an extent 
that they cannot supply the demand. So in the area of rice, we have tremendous opportunity for investment, for value added, and also to expand our productive capacity. Historically, Guyana is known to be a sugar country. The original Demerara sugar remains a product of Guyana. Demerara gold, Demerara brown sugar is a product of Guyana. Guyana is the home <coughs> to the original Demerara brown sugar. But we have never been able to move our value up the value chain. So we have never been able to invest in refinery so that we could have we can tap into the refined sugar market. And the regional demand for refined white sugar is two hundred thousand tons, all of which is exported external to the region. Guyana own demand for refined white sugar is 200,000 tons. So even for our own demand for refined white sugar, we have to import. So why is it important for us to move to refined sugar? Refined sugar carry a price of US $490 per metric ton, whilst brown sugar carries a price of $300 US per metric ton on the global market, a difference of $190. We have many estates, I will not go through them with you, that the government is ready and willing to work with serious investors to look at refining the sugar, modernizing the sector, coal generation, ethanol, fuel production. These are all opportunities that exist within the sugar sector itself. An emerging giant globally is the coconut industry. The coconut industry is emerging not only as a strong agricultural product, but a product that is well diversified within itself. So you have from the coconut, value added coconut water, you have coconut milk, you have flour, virgin coconut oil, then you have the coconut waste management that can convert the waste into green fiber that that by itself has a market so coconut export earnings or coconut export earnings stand at only 7 million US dollars but what is the opportunity that the coconut industry can bring that opportunity is tapping into an industry that is valued at US $500 million. An industry that is valued at $500 million US dollars annually. And that is only for bottled coconut water. That is only for bottled coconut water. And we have tremendous opportunity here in Guyana for the expansion of the coconut industry and for value added within the coconut industry. So the global world demand, the global demand for coconut product is valued at $5.7 billion. That is the global demand for coconut product. 
is valued at US $5.7 billion. And this is expected to grow to $9 billion US dollars by 2025. This industry is expected to grow to $9 billion US dollars by 2025. So again, the opportunities in this industry are tremendous. I, 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 I saw Ambassador Lynch looking at our time, so I guess I, I, I need to wrap up soon. Then we have tremendous opportunities <clears throat> in corn and soya. As I said, we are supporting the backward linkage for feed production and uh, for the poultry sector. That is part of the plan. So we have tremendous opportunity there. Just to give you an example, in corn and soya bean meal, for the local, for the local feed input, the market or what we have imported is valued close to 50 million US dollars. Close to 50 million US dollars. And all of that we can produce locally. So again, the land is available. What we need is your presence and your investment. Tremendous opportunities are available in agro-processing, agro packaging. Those are areas, fresh fruit, fruit pulp, concentrates. All of these are areas where you have tremendous opportunity. Development of spices are all areas in which Guyana has comparative advantage. And of course, our local demand for meat and food would grow tremendously with investments that will take place over the medium to long term. So my friends, you are pushing at an open door in Guyana. You're pushing at a country that is ready to welcome you, to welcome investment in food security, investment in the agricultural sector, and investment that is specifically targeted to meet global demand and regional demand. Just before I close, I want to say to you that Guyana has also taken back the lead role on, agric on agriculture for the region, that is the CARICOM region, and for the purposes of moving forward. We have the Minister of Agriculture here who would engage with you. I will still be here for a bit more to engage, but we are going to assign a staff that will specifically follow up on interests. And the minister will tell you who that staff is. There's a young lady here, uh, Mr. Tasha Birgit, and that staff will specifically follow up on all the interests out of this. Of course, you know we have uh, my own director of projects in the office of the president, Marcia Nadir, she is available, and our foreign secretary is here too, and he is available at any time to answer any issues, any, any clarification you may need from the trade side, and of course the minister is here on policy. So thank you very much. We are very grateful and happy about your interests in Guyana. We look forward to welcome you, welcoming you and your investment in a safe investment destination. Thank you very much.